uh, I think we can begin with this statistical learning part. So as I was just telling you quickly, so there are a few terminologies which uh, I, I will not be explaining. I hope people already are aware of it, of them rather. For instance, uh, you have central tendency that is mean, median and mode. Okay. Then there is something called as dispersion, which is uh, standard deviation or the square of it, which is variance. And then there is covariance, correlation. I hope uh, people know about these terminologies. I'm awaiting a response actually. Yeah. 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 Right? Yes. Okay. 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 Fine. From my end, yes. yes. I know well. All right. All right. So in that case, we can proceed. So first thing is, how do we start off with the statistical learning? So the moment we talk about statistical learning, it involves data. Right. So here, as we see, it's an outline. That this is how we intend to go ahead with this entire thing. So the, the statement, it says, what is statistical learning? Then in the subheading, you say, why estimate F? Now, what does that F mean? So that F is nothing but a function which we assume that the underlying data follows. Okay. So there are various distributions or various functions which are already existent. For instance, the most popular of them all is the bell curve or as we know it as the normal curve, right? So that's a function. So it is defined by a couple of parameters. It is defined by mu, which is nothing but the mean and also a standard deviation. So mu and sigma, that's how in the, in the statistical parlance they are known as. Using mu and sigma, we can define any normal distribution or any function following the normal curve, right? So the idea here is to understand that whether any data which is provided to us, does it fit any of these functions which are already existing, okay? Second thing is, uh, how do we estimate, okay? Now we can take a pen and paper and try calculating the best estimate. That is one way of doing it. Or we can leave it up to the computer to help us in this, uh, doing the same job. Okay, I'll get to I'll get to the part on about how do we exactly carry out these estimates. All right, and then we have this trade-off between uh, prediction accuracy and model interpretability. Again, as we proceed, I shall explain. And uh, again, there is something called as supervised and unsupervised learning. Regression and classification. Well, regression and classification, both of them are part of supervised learning. So I guess uh, this was, this should have been earlier. That is regression and classification followed by supervised and supervised. All right. So I so think we can start formally. So this is what we are uh, referring to when you talk about statistical learning. And please let me know if I am going too fast. Okay, because this is the very first time I'm having uh, 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 an audience of this size. Okay, I don't teach any, anyone actually. So this is the very first time. Uh, okay, so let's let's talk about data. All right. And in our case, we're referring to random variables. All right. So any variable about which we do not know what is going to be the next outcome. Okay. Now that is a random variable. For instance, you take an example of what is the centimeter of rainfall, which is going to take, which is going to happen tomorrow, day after, the day after that. We don't know. This is a random variable. It could, it could be anything. It could be, have any value. Similarly, you take a six-sided die and you roll it. You don't know which face would be facing, which, which one would be facing upwards right it could be any one of the six sides okay so th th these are all random variables that means you do not know a priori what exactly is going to be the outcome right so this is again we are trying to establish a relationship between the random variable which is nothing but the y that we see here and what other variables which are there which occur at the same time or before okay so those set of variables which we call them as covariates okay the reason why i'm using the word covariate is the reason why i'm using covariate is 
the way y changes or y varies what other variables along with y vary hence the word covariance that means they vary together that's the reason why we call these the set of variables represented by x as covariates okay yeah all right uh, Pudhi, uh, i have a question right Pudhi, can we yeah. can, can we give a, with a realistic example like i know you come from the domain right so anything like statistical learning in any related to if you can throw some yeah. in the what you also right parallel yeah 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 so let's let's look at this example all right so what i'll do is let's have it this way i'll move to and for, fro from this slide which is actually very theoretical to this particular slide here all right so this this particular slide here we see is actually a python code okay and what we observe here is these are the various fields or variables say the words field variables features covariates they're all interchangeable so you can use whichever is suitable okay so here the y represent y is represented by this particular variable that you see that is median value so this is this data uh, yeah. just stop right see uh, uh, can you explain yeah. what is this example right i know you are doing in housing data so if you can throw some uh, example right what yeah. are, like what we are trying to achieve so then you right. can, like that will be great yeah sure so okay if if you can view this url over here this will redirect you to a data set about the housing prices all right so housing prices actually this is the median values of of the house and these are various these are variables which occur together in this data set all right for instance this one i think uh, since this is from the us this is the percentage of black population in that neighborhood okay and this is pupil to teacher ratio in that particular area okay and this is nox represents the nitrous oxide uh, percentage in that area okay so then there are various okay this is industry how far is the industry okay the nearest industrial area the distance okay so these are variables which are present in the data set if you just if you can simply if you click on this url it will redirect you to that particular website so let me just let's see if i can just give me a second if i can navigate to the website just give me a second Pradhi, what are we trying to achieve, Pradhi, from this particular URL? What is what is out of this exercise? Let's see, can you define yeah. the, the problems, right? Yeah. See if you can yeah. example, right? I think that will help the team also, right? Because yes, see, so that is uh, what I am trying to achieve now. Let me just quickly give you an example. Along with the example, I'll explain so it will be easier for you to follow. All right. I'll just read out the description here. So what is it that we are trying to achieve? So we are trying to achieve. the prices okay the prices of house median value of owner occupied homes all right this is what we are trying to achieve all right and this is the geography this is somewhere in the us right and these are the attributes these are the attributes which occur alongside this particular variable here so this is what we are trying to predict that given an area and this information about that particular area what would be the house price or what is the most likely price of a particular house that's what we are trying to predict okay so is this clear hello you can you carry on i have muted everyone uh, right so people cannot talk right you carry on right oh, that's fine okay any okay, okay. Right? see anyone right if i have any questions they will unmute them and then try try to like, ask you but you can continue okay 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 no please stop me if if you find it confusing or if i am going too fast so that's that's the reason why i halted no problem okay so this is the context now this is the context so now here what we are trying to achieve now this is data right this is data all of it is data and if you just have a look here at the data set hello 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 pradeep here yeah yes pradeep uh i want to know these everything whatever right i to also did my research on this machine learning only supervised right data. right 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 how for work for unstructured data take for example what you have taken uci housing data set 
correct it is all structural data which can be conventionally stored in uh, rows and columns right yes how do uh, this statistical learning only fit for only for structured data itself no 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 it this can very well be carried out regression see to perform regression, regression whatever the uh, so you will have to it will in be sorry Or, uh, supervised learning so for yes example, okay for example uh, a patient data or any this one uh, type of image uh, what you call like that answer can be stored in uh, conventional rows and columns okay okay so okay so your question is can this statistical learning or machine learning can it be used for unstructured data it is very much used for any type of data Unstructured data. But in the UCL learning, whatever the data set they are taken, they are all structured itself, no? Okay. Okay. Considered in a unstructured data. Okay. The reason can why I chose this. Can you give me an example? Okay. Okay. I think there is a slight confusion here because this is an introductory lecture. This is not. an advanced level lecture if you have uh, expertise in unstructured data as well i can explain that but what about the rest of the audience i don't think they they would have uh, much experience in uh, this yeah field. yeah and see uh, right? i think pradeep and the team right see let's set the content right so let yeah see what i what i suggest also the the team right let's you continue right if any have any like for example if you think right prithvi that this particular yeah. is an advanced thing right we can talk offline right you people have a links right you can talk offline on that right so maybe yeah. limited time right so you can continue if anything this specific is not related, like for example on structure which you think right uh, uh, mm. can be taken offline right you please take it offline and then we can we can continue now okay no problem no mm. problem yeah so again going back to that uh, that uci data set this is housing data set that i am referring to so here is what uh, 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 prithvi i have a question let's see i want to know yeah. right see, where exam like see i know right see if this confusion of analytics is there right? there are lot of uh, like statistical learning or like there are right. different different models right so right how do i know right for this example for this example mm -hmm. right for example this one i have to use this particular regression anal analysis or i have to use okay. the statistical analysis how do i know as as a layman guy i see the data yeah. yeah how do you know okay for that you will have to first plot your data so that's the very very first requirement so if you have a look here let me just increase the slide play from current slide okay so i have explained you about this particular data set right it is a data set containing housing information correct and you the intention here is to predict the median prices that is medv this variable right so now this is your variable of interest so you would want to know how best can we estimate this okay and how do we make an estimate out of it we make an estimate out of it based on the values of the covariates that's what we intend to do okay so then we first do a some sort do a plotting here what do you observe on the right hand side of the screen is a pairwise plot it's a bivariate plot now why do we call it a bivariate plot if you just uh, run your uh, cursors here can you see on the left right hand side you see the variable on the y axis okay and each of them you see has a pairwise combination with one variable below see here this l stat okay you see the pairwise comparison with each of these variables right rm along with median value now the so question second, coming back when, if anyone say if anyone have a questions right you please unmute yourself there is no need to raise a hand you please unmute and ask the question that's not a problem right if anyone have any specific questions okay so uh, since uh, uh, you asked about 
when can we use linear regression okay i'm being very specific when can we use linear regression very simply have a look in these two encircled diagram they are identical by the way because if i look into this row i am checking the scatter plot of rm versus median value where median is on the x axis rm is on the y axis conversely if median happens to be on the y axis and rm happens to be on the x axis i still get the same scatter plot all right now here is where the the trick lies now you see you might observe that there is a linear you can see you can draw a straight line through this uh, this particular scatter plot okay you can very well draw a straight line so there is an evidence of a linear relationship which exists between rm and medv that's median value at once we can see or we can determine that this is a perfect case for using a linear regression approach okay this is how we determine but let's take this particular case where we have median value alongside l stat so this has more of a curvature now this is curvy linear this is not linear okay so if i were to take this variable and use it to predict median value i will not take a linear relationship instead i'll take a curvy linear relationship okay i won't take a linear function or if if i want to convert everything to the linear form then maybe i will transform l stat so as so as to make the relationship between these two similar to what we have in the circle that is bring out a linear relationship okay so this is the essence that is you will have to establish some linear relationship if you are intending to use linear regression okay that is the thing by the way we should not only confine ourselves to linear regression because in nature or in in practical life you will hardly get uh, relationships which are linear in nature they are definitely anything but linear okay so you will have to carry out a lot of transformation of your data of your variables in order to get some sort of linear uh, what do you call pattern of this sort okay so let me go back to the earlier slide now just give me a uh, guys any questions uh, anyone have any questions to prudvi okay so hmm. can you proceed uh, yeah see uh, i'm i'm coming to the basic question again prudvi right see just, just, yeah. just one question sorry yes. sorry uh, 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 the first basic question is the plot yeah. the plotting of the parameters is it right. normal plotting or uh, there are some different technique has been used to plot this this is a simple scatter plot okay a scatter plot is a bivariate plot in which you yeah. have a pair of variables and you plot their points on the xy plane that's it nothing okay. special simple okay. Okay. simple scatter plot please okay. don't refer to the diagonal okay diagonal is not the scatter plot i'm just uh, a off diagonal only the off diagonal diagrams okay yeah uh, prudvi see yeah i'm coming from the again the, the real time point of view right see for example right. tomorrow i'm getting lot of like it can be an, i'm talking about an iot perspective right i i'm talking right. any machine data right like okay. it, any any am i giving an a lift data escalator that any data i'm talking about right right which right. which particular method model or like is, so is there any any rule or law saying that right for this particular data okay. okay there is no rule of thumb there is no rule of thumb to guide us as to what algorithm should be used okay there is no rule of thumb as such oh. okay it has to be determined by performing something called as data exploration or exploratory data analysis or eda in short okay. okay what what we just saw here is the most basic type of eda the most basic is a scatter plot okay but uh, here we just have one pair of variables at a time see this is one pair similarly this and this but 
when we look at data in more than uh, two dimension, the best we can do is have a three dimensional data. That's the only way we can visualize. We can never visualize beyond three dimensions. So in that case, when you talk about Internet of Things and really high dimensional data, say genomic data, where you have genes, uh, where every row or every data or a record has probably hundreds and thousands of uh, variables. There is absolutely no scope of this analysis, but very we can very well perform this analysis. But prior to doing this, we'll have to reduce the dimension. Okay, we'll have to perform something called as dimensionality reduction. We'll have to reduce the dimension to a manageable extent and then carry out the similar set of steps. Oh, okay. So that is how one should go about performing your analysis. And uh, and it's again from experience that we should never have any thought about what model to use when we get the data. At that point of time, we should keep our minds totally free of any model or anything. First, explore. If we do happen to see some pattern or you think that there should be a pattern, only then you think about fitting models. Okay, Because it might be a case where there is absolutely nothing. So it is very much possible that the data might not have anything which can be remotely modeled. So that is also a possibility. So let's not uh, let's not have this notion that whatever data is provided to us that can be modeled. That is the wrong uh, wrong way of approaching any problem. Okay, all right. So go, coming back to this expression of Y, which is in, in our example the house of um, sorry price of houses as a function of the covariates that is the other variables which I just showed you. Okay. And since this is an estimate, therefore, we'll always have something called as an error. So this error will always be present. Okay. So this whole expression is another is the relationship which we are trying to establish. Now, if I go back uh, here, sorry, not go back. Okay. Now have a look here. In this particular diagram, assume in place of x, it could be any of those variables which we saw, apart from median prices of houses. You can, this is a placeholder for any of the other variables, okay? And y is the median prices of the house, okay? Now, if you were to plot and you get this kind of a plot, right? This is a plot. This is a scatter plot. Do you see a linear relationship? I guess the answer would be no, because there is no rela relationship here, correct? So now, what are we trying here? The idea is, we assume that, you know, the red line, red line is what we are trying to estimate. Mind you, this is not a linear regression. This particular red line that we see here, it is not a linear regression. It is a curvy linear regression or polynomial regression. The reason why I'm saying polynomial is this function that we spoke about, this function, it could be a first order, second order, it could be n orders as well. So the degree of the function will determine whether the relationship is, whether the estimate, that is this red line, whether it's a straight line or otherwise, okay? So the degree of that particular function will determine this factor. So in this particular case, what we see here is, a curvilinear relationship, right? And this is a curvilinear estimate. Now, the moment we talk about estimate, there is this notion of error, okay? So you see, this is the original data. These green points that we see is the original data and the red line that we have drawn or that we have formulated and we have assumed that this is the most likely function which is representative of the data. There exists errors, you see? The difference between this point and the distance between this point and the estimate, this is the error, okay? And for every point, there will be some value. Some points are on the line, so that value for, for that particular error, let's say for this case, would be zero. Whereas this is a positive error. Similarly, this is a negative error. So the idea is the expected value of all these errors. Now, when I say expected value, that is if you average out all these errors, you should get zero. That is the assumption. Okay. All right. So now comes another another important point is 
the spread of the data. So before I started our discussion, I talked about dispersion, that is standard deviation. That's one of the terms which I had used. Now imagine if the data is this, this way. All right, if the data, if you plot Y versus X and you get such kind of a pattern. So you don't see much spread, right? It's tightly knit. So if you were to plot this function, this particular red line, it would fit perfectly in this particular case because your errors would anyway, you will not have any high value of error, very minimal error. Now, similarly, you see there is a gradual dispersion that this particular plot here that we see, points are spread, they're slightly spread from what we saw in the original. Here we see even more spread. And here you see the most sparse data that we see here. Now imagine trying to fit a data or trying to fit a function in this particular case, vis-a-vis -vis this particular uh, diagram. You will see that your amount of error in this particular plot would be much higher as compared to this plot. That's because of the dispersion. That is how spread apart are the data points. That determines how accurate or inaccurate is your uh, estimate. In this case, your function. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Any questions so far? Uh, so this is what. Yeah. Uh, so to 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 draw these plots, right? You have to run some right. programs. Correct. So the regression is nothing but the red line that we see. Can you see the red line? This. Yes. Yeah, that is the actual regression line which we produce after carry, carrying out our, you know, in the Python code that you saw. Okay. There is a, okay. Look. Just give me a second, just quickly, so that, uh, you know, you see this line here? Okay. This particular, yeah, so here you're trying to fit, you're trying to fit the X's on the Y, right? This is the regression. Oh, got you. Okay. Now, in this particular plot, you see the blue line. Now, this particular example is... It's an, a perfect example of a parametric uh, learning, parametric machine learning or parametric statistical learning or parametric model. So why do we say parametric? Because this, we assume that there exists, we make an assumption that there exists a function which very well defines this particular distribution. There exists a function, that is what we assume. The blue line is that particular function, the blue line. But then since we, ex we are in the real world, so we don't uh, live in the ideal world. So the best thing that we can do is we can come up with an estimate of that particular blue line. Hence the word estimate, you see, estimate. So we do not say we have found the perfect function which defines this data. We only say that we have found the estimate, which is the red line that you see which is probably the best way to describe the blue line, which is nothing but the function which we assume exists. Okay. So if you see in the first case, our, est our estimate and the actual function, they are more or less uh, overlaying each other. But as we move in the other direction, we see given the spread of the data, our estimate and what the fact is, the fact is blue line and our estimate is red. You see there is some disagreement. That is because of the spread of the data and the nature of the data. Okay, this is bound to happen. It is not as if we have gone wrong. This is this is this is bound to happen. This is how the analysis is. Okay, so now here we are talking about two dimensions, right? This is one dimension. This is another dimension. So let's say if we can visualize it in three D. So here now the covariates are years of education and the seniority and income is our response okay so if income is what we are trying to understand or we are trying to predict income or, or we are trying to estimate income based on the education and seniority you see this spline this particular spline this is what we uh, try which we will be using to uh, model income okay and you see these red dots these are nothing but the errors this particular thing here. This is in 2D. Same thing that we see here is in three dimension. Okay. So here you see years of education in the, on the x axis. If you take this as the y axis and then 
income is in the z axis so what you are trying to predict is you are trying to predict income based on these two covariates so now how are we going to uh, visualize it let's say when years of education change okay when this particular change uh, variable changes keeping this constant keeping seniority constant okay then what is the impact on income okay this is how we analyze similarly you keep this as constant that is keeping the years of education constant obviously it will be constant after a point of time so based on seniority will the income change again that is another way of looking at it okay all right so now the question is why do we estimate this f now again this f is nothing i keep going back to this red line okay this f is nothing but the red line that is the function okay which is an estimate of the real life function so how, why do we estimate it so we estimate it because of two reasons either we want to understand that is infer from the data that what is the impact of these on particular variable of response uh, sorry response this particular variable of interest in this case income or whether we are able to carry out some sort of prediction that is given years of education and seniority can we predict what would be what would be the income so these are the two reasons why we actually try to estimate this function okay so these are the reasons now let's talk about the first one that's prediction when can we uh, uh, or when should, yeah yeah, yeah because right we have only uh, means uh, i will, because this uh, uh, zoom right is only allows yeah. a 40 minutes of free session right okay okay for, right in the next couple of minutes what i will do is i will restart yeah. so that we can join back but before okay. that right i want to ask that uh, members right any specific yeah. questions until now so maybe in the next couple of minutes we will have the questionnaire session so that right if any questions right you can address that so when you revert, yeah. when you come back right and join i want everyone uh, to join back again right i think just the same the same id no change in the id just click okay. that id just join okay. and then we will we'll continue back all right okay so uh, any questions right uh, anyone can unmute and then ask the questions to prudvi okay okay uh vijay i hear someone is asking a question any specific questions so that that's fine right if anyone is not having questions right i will i will i will uh, just stop it off and then uh, uh, prudvi yeah yeah you okay. are there, right? so i'll just uh, swatch it off and then rejoin it you can rejoin everyone can rejoin now okay 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 